right? Yes. It's scary. Mm-hmm. And very lonely. Yes. Notice this body that feels so tight and scary. Are you male or female? Female. Yes. Are you young or old? Teen, teenager? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it the same body you have? Mm -hmm. Yes. Notice where you are. I'm in a bedroom in, in my home I grew up in. Yes, and what's happening? I'm alone in my room and I'm... I feel sick and I feel shame. I feel shame that I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue. And there's no one I can tell. Yes. Because it's all my fault. Mm -hmm. And I'll be in trouble. Yes. Tell me more. I was with my brother and his baseball coach and took us to the Dairy Queen and then he took my brother home mm -hmm. and I stayed and he tried to touch me yes and part of me wanted the attention yes and I knew my parents would be so mad if they found out he would be so mad because he's older yes and I was in a car with him mm-hmm so I can't tell. Yes. Yes. So what's the most difficult part of not being able to tell anybody about what you just did that feels so shameful? Just being alone in the, in the shame and thinking it's all my fault. Yes. And I just feel small, just really small. Mm -hmm. I feel ugly too. I'm mm -hmm. ugly. I'm just sad that I blame myself for that. I'm kind of mad that I could carry this stuff and not know better. I'm, I'm, I'm mad that I went with him. Mm -hmm. Mad that I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. How is this all now affecting you as an adult? What does it make you do? I shut down mm -hmm. and I don't let people all the way in. Going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you're going to go back before this all happened with your coach. And this time you're going to experience it fully with detail. One, two, and three. You see yourself there now. What's happening? We're sitting on a bench in, a, in the park at the baseball field. Yes. And I wore a cute shirt because I knew he was going to be there. Yes. My brother was there. My mom sent me to go get my brother. And he was kind of flirting-ish, like I guess. Yes. Um, paying attention. Yes. To me. Yes, and how old are you there? Thirteen. So what happens next? He asked if it would be okay if we would go get ice cream with him at the Dairy Queen. Yes. And uh, I don't know if I asked my mom. I don't think I, we did. I think I just we just got in the car. Yes. And it was a big old freaking Pontiac thing. Mm-hmm. And I was excited that somebody was paying attention to me. Yes. That had a car. Yes. And I thought he was cute. Mm-hmm. So be there at that moment. What happens next? We go, we get ice cream. And he tells my brother that he's going to drop him off at the park mm -hmm. and we sit in the car. Yes. And I was 
like I felt icky, like I knew yes. this wasn't right. Like, Yes, what are these feelings that you're feeling now? <laughs> Just sad and emotional and mad. Yes, yes. It's a jerk. Yes. He, he called me fat. Mm-hmm. So I want you to go home now and I want you to talk to someone. Who would you like to tell about what just happened? My dad. Very good. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you're going to speak with your dad and tell him exactly what happened. One, two, and three. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> I got in the car with Richard and he pulled my shirt up. Did he try to touch me? Yes. Yes. Wait, Dad, what do you say back to your daughter? <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, oh, my God. Are you sure? Switch. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yes. Tell your daddy what you need from him. <laughs> Please believe me. Mm hmm. Switch. Dad? What do you say? Of course I do. Yes. Of course I do. What do you tell your daughter about men now? He was bad to do that. He should know better. It's not your fault. Yes. Yes. That was not right. Yes. You didn't cause it. Mm -hmm. And Dad, notice how your daughter has been holding this in. She was afraid to talk to you. What do you say to her about this? I'm so sorry you were afraid to tell me. I wouldn't have blamed you. Yes. It wasn't your fault that my dad is holding me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Telling me it's going to be okay and hugging me. Very good. Very good. So I want you to find all that ickiness inside of you that you've been holding there before telling your dad. What does all of this look like inside of you? black muck tar. Mm -hmm. All right, I want you to go inside of that stomach and I want you to pull out all that black muck. Take it all out. And I want you to fling it at Richard. Just fling it at him. That's his. That's his stuff. That's his disgusting stuff. You don't need that. Yes. And I want you to tell Richard that you want you to, him to give you back what he took from you, your innocence. Everything that he took from me. Go ahead and talk to Richard. Richard, you're an asshole. Yes. You had no right to do that. Yes. You no. had no right to do that and take it from me. And I want it back. I want my innocence back. Give it to me and now. I want, give it to me now. Open your arms and receive it. Take it. Yes. Take it all in. Breathe it in. Fill that place where it was so icky. Fill it with that beautiful, beautiful innocence once again. Yes, very good. Very good. And now that all of that is done, I want you to talk to this little girl, this little 13-year-old girl. What do you say to her? Oh, honey. You're so good. This wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything to create this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. Yes. I can't hurt you anymore. Give her a big hug. Give that Wendy a hug. Make her feel safe. I've always got you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So now just take a deep breath in and allow yourself to just flow away from that, knowing that now that young girl is safe. She's told her daddy and he's accepted that and he loves her. So I want you to look inside of you and notice where you have been holding all of this feeling. Yes. 
What does mm -hmm. it look like to you? Like a gray lump. Yes, yes. And go deep inside that lump. Oh. What is made? What has made that lump? Look at all the words, the feelings, the emotions, the moments. What's in there? It's like a thick, heavy rock. Mm-hmm. Like a porous yes. moon rock. Yes. Just clogging up, mm -hmm. pushing out. Yes. And that porous rock, what is it doing to this body? Taking out the joy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Why is it that you've held on to this rock for so long? <sighs> yes. What does that rock <sighs> Who will I be without it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Will anybody love me? Yes. So let's find out when you put that rock there. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you'll find the moment in which you began to create that rock within you. One, no matter where it is in this lifetime or another. Two, finding the origin of that rock when you created it. And three, where are you? I'm a boy. Mm hmm How old are you there? I think about 12. Yes. Where are you? Kind of jungly, primitive mm -hmm. area. Yes. And I'm all alone. Yes. Why are you all alone there? I don't know where my family, I don't know where anyone is. Mm -hmm. I feel very alone. Yes. Yes, continue. What happens next? I'm walking, trying to find something to eat, mm -hmm. and the people in the village are gone. What's happened to all the people in the village? I don't know. I'm looking in the doors, and it's like... They just got up and left because mm -hmm. their things are still here. Yes. And that livestock is still here. Yes. What happens next? I go to my family's hut. <laughs> and there's a fire and there's no one in there. Where are they? Yes, continue. They're gone. They left, they left me. There's no one left. Yes, continue. I go down to the end of the village and there's an old man on the ground sitting. He's like blind or handicapped. Yes. And he says, don't look there, they're all gone. And I asked, where have they gone? He said, the marauders were coming. Mm -hmm. And they, they fled. They fled to mm -hmm. the mountains. The waters were coming? The marauders. The marauders. Mm -hmm. Is this a type of people? Yes, bad people. Mm -hmm. With weapons. Yes. And they will take our things and our people yes. and our women. So they left. And I am too old. The old man says, I'm too old. I stay here. Mm-hmm. What happens with you now? My family left without me, and do they know they left without me? Yes. How do I know? Did they do it on purpose? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me? Yes. I stand at the end of the street and I wait for my mom to come get me. And nobody comes to get me. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, continue. What happens next? <laughs> I, I, I go back to my house at the hut and I sleep there and I wait and I wait and no one ever comes. Mm-hmm. There is no food. And one day I die. Notice how it is that you die. I die by myself. Mm-hmm. And up until this moment, what's been the most difficult part of all of this? Not knowing why they left me. Mm-hmm. Was it on purpose? Yes. Why didn't they come get me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you're going to relive this, but this time you're going to experience everything with full knowledge of what's happening. And you're going to allow your body to feel everything. One, two, and three. How does this all begin? I'm not sure I understand. How does this story all begin when your parents leave? Where are you? I'm just playing outside, being kicking the dirt, kicking rocks, mm -hmm. taking a stick, hitting the trees, being a boy in the jungle, yes. looking for bugs, Yes. talking to animals, Yes. just playing, having fun with mm -hmm. no responsibilities. Very good. Say that again. Having fun with no responsibilities. Very good. And then what happens next? I go back to the village area. I'm going to go eat at home in my hut, and I start to see everyone's gone. Mm -hmm. And I look in the different doors or the doorways. There's no doors. You can see in all the different huts and the people are gone. Yes. But I still smell the, the food mm -hmm. and I see chickens and goats and a fire in a hut yes. on the stove thing and it's like they were just here and now they're not. Yes. And as you see that they're here and now they're not, notice what, what thoughts are going through your mind when this is happening. Is this a trick? Is this a joke? Is this a game we play? Mm-hmm. Like hide and seek? Yes. Come out, you're here, I know you are. Mm-hmm. Yes, continue. And then it, I see it in all the houses. And then I start to worry, what's going on? Did I, what did I miss? Did somebody call me and I not hear it? Yes. Is it my fault that I didn't hear this? Was I not paying attention? Mm-hmm. Yes. Was I supposed to be here? Yes. Maybe I should have been at home. Now they're punishing me. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Now they're punishing me. Yes. Because I wasn't at home. Mm-hmm. And they all left because they're mad at me. Yes. Yes, continue. But they cannot be. All, everyone is gone. This is a mistake. They forgot. I'm here. I'm right here. Yes. Yes, continue. Mom, Dad, my little sister, where, where are they? I will wait for you. Say that again. I will wait for you. Yes. Continue, what happens next? So I sit at the edge of the village and I wait. And I wait days and nights for someone to come get me. 
Mm-hmm. Later. I'm going to count to three. When I get to number three, I want you to go to the point in which your body is beginning to die. One, two, and three. What's happening? I'm laying on the ground on a mat. Yes. And I'm so weak. I'm so weak. Yes. And I don't have the strength to move my arm or legs. And I just feel my cheek against the straw mat. And I just feel life. Mm -hmm. And notice what part of your body is feeling this. Like this side. Mm -hmm. This side is just leaking the energy. The life force is just dissipating out. Yes. Yes. And as this body is dying, notice what what else is feeling that the life force is leaving. Hope. Mm-hmm. Yes. I welcome the end. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired. So tired. So notice what part of your body dies first. I think my limbs. Mm -hmm. I don't feel them anymore. And as you don't feel your limbs anymore, notice what's happening to your organs, your heart. Your lungs? Just slow leak mm -hmm. of life force. Yes. It's almost like I can feel the lack of blood or the blood just stop pumping. Mm -hmm. And as this blood stops pumping, what is the last thought that you think within that brain? I hope I see my mom and dad again. Mm-hmm. Yes. But a sadness in them. Yes. Not really believing it, but just hoping. Mm-hmm. So notice where your soul is when all of this is happening. It's floating above, but not just ten feet above, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yes. And as your soul is floating above, what's been the most difficult part of all of this? Feeling so alone, mm -hmm. having no one. Yes. Missing my family. Mm -hmm. and not understanding. Very good. So as a soul now, you could find your family. I want you to find them and I want you to talk to them. They're so happy. Mm -hmm. Talk to your family and tell them exactly how you feel about how, how could they you leave me? You. How yes. could you leave me? We tried, we, oh, we tried. We tried to find you, but they came so fast. They took us with guns. Mm -hmm. They shot your father. Yes. And explain to them that you made a vow that you would wait for them. I waited for you. I waited for you. Mm -hmm. And look into their eyes, the eyes of the window to the soul. Have you seen those eyes before? Look at your mom, your dad, your little sister. My mom is my grandpa. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's twice he's left me. Mm-hmm. Talk to him. And explain to him how you feel about being left. I love you so much. How come you keep leaving me? Mm-hmm. Switch. Grandpa, what do you say back? Or my mom's dad. Mm-hmm. He says, my love for you is not measured in time. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. I've always been there and always will. Mm-hmm. But notice that with all of this love, it's created this burden, this very heavy rock. All of this waiting. I feel so heavy. Yes. Are you ready to release that rock now? So I want you to go ahead and take your hands and just pull that rock out. Just pull that whole thing out. You don't need to wait any longer. Yes. Get it off of you. Yes. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. And now in that space where that rock has been, you need to put something beautiful, something light. You could put pictures of your family. You could put beautiful reminders of them. Something that you can keep with you that doesn't burden you, that doesn't weigh. What would you like to put in that space? I want to put in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm going to sound the tuning fork, and I want you to go ahead and feel that ocean it's coming right in. Breathe it in. Allow it to just feel the, feel the waves just flowing in and out, filling that space. That's it. Very good. And now that you've filled that space, we need to do something about that vow that you made, that vow that you will always be waiting for them. This is something that you want to drag through every lifetime. Time for it to go. Mm -hmm. Very good. And now? I take back my energy. Now I take back my energy. And my power. And my power. And feel that power. Take it back. As that promise has now been broken, you wait for no one. You live your life for you. And as you feel this power coming back, I want you to scan your body and see how this body is feeling. Lighter. Very good. So as this body is feeling lighter, now we're gonna to need to take that soul of that boy into the light talk to him, explain to him what has just happened, and take him back home. And tell me when you're there. I'm there. Very good. Just breathe in that light now. And now you could be with your family. Knowing that in time, they're always there. Very good. So now I want you to scan your body and I want you to look at these things that are happening on your face. As you scan that body, I want you to tell me how it feels. What does it feel when you feel this stuff on your face? I feel like it's shame. Mm -hmm. Go deep into that shame as I count from one to three. When I get to number three, we'll go to the moment in which that shame first appeared. One, feel the feeling on that face, feeling the shame. Two, and three. Where are you? It's not this life. Mm -hmm. Where are you? I want to say it's like Puritan Pilgrim. Yes. 1600s. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? I'm a female. What's happening? I'm in a, like a nun habit type thing or yes. the period close with 
a lot of covered up. Yes. Face thing. Are you young or old there? 18. Mm hmm. Yes, what's happening? I've just been publicly whipped. Mm hmm. With a whip. Yes. Across the face. Mm hmm. In the public square. Yes. Because I sinned. Yes. What do you feel? Deep shame mm -hmm. that I brought to my family. Yes. Continue. And conflict. Tell me about that conflict. I didn't feel what I did was wrong. Yes. Tell me more. I said that I had feelings for a male. Yes. And I was a mo somebody's mother told the head of the church that I had unpure thoughts. Mm hmm And so I was whipped in church. Yes. Who whipped you? The pastor. Mm-hmm. What did he say to you? You shameful child. Mm hmm You shall be judged for your unpure thoughts. Mm -hmm. You will bear this mark. It's a reminder not to sin. Mm -hmm. Say that again. You will bear this mark as a reminder not to sin. Mm hmm And people will look upon you and judge you. Yes. Yes, continue. What happens next? He said he will pray for my soul. Mm hmm And I see my parents are full of shame. Now they are shunned by the village. Yes. I didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I did not act. Yes. I just spoke how I felt. Yes. Continue. What happens next? That Mr. John was cute. Mm-hmm. And handsome. Yes. So now I have no friends. No one is allowed to socialize with me at church or at school. Yes. Yes. I end up working in the church as penance. Yes, notice how it is that you work. Menial <coughs> duties, cleaning for the pastor. Yes. Cleaning the church. Preparing food. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue. Advance a little bit more. I died there. Never married. Mm -hmm. A servant of the church. Trying to atone for my sins. Mm hmm. So as you look at this lifetime, what's been the most difficult part of, all, of this? Being alone. Mm -hmm. Being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Shame and fear of being judged. Mm -hmm. Sadness. Lonely, very lonely. How has this affected you in the life as Wendy? still disassociate and go within. Mm -hmm. I just check my mind out instead mm -hmm. of feeling it. Yes. And in order to disassociate, what is it that you do in the life as Wendy or have done? I'll either work too much. Mm-hmm. 
just shut my brain off and focus on someone else mm -hmm. and do busy work. Yes. What else have you done in order to disassociate and go within? Well, I drank. Mm -hmm. I drank alcohol for sure. Yes. Very good. So listen very carefully. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you're going to go to see how all of this misunderstanding began. But this time you're going to feel everything. Don't hold back. One, two, and three. How does this all begin? Yes, notice where you are. I'm a young adult. What is it? I'm a young adult. Young adult, yes. And I'm at a high school party. Mm -hmm. Is this the young girl as the, pil as the pilgrim? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's a church function. Yes. One of the other girls makes fun, fun of my sweater. Mm-hmm. So it has a hole in it. Yes. And she publicly shames me. Yes. Or she says something. Notice how this makes you feel. This shame. Less than. Mm-hmm. Unimportant. Poor. Yes. Not good enough. Mm-hmm. What happens next? I go home. I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. Yes, continue. And I don't say anything to anyone because I don't want my parents to feel badly that I don't have an, a nicer sweater. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue. So I just go in my room and I tell everyone everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Everything is okay. And I start studying. Yes. And I put all my time into schoolwork. Mm -hmm. I'm very smart. Very good, continue. What happens next? What happens with Mr. John? He praises me for my intellect. Mm -hmm. Who is he to you? teacher, but not very much older, mm -hmm. but in authority. Yes. And I rather fancy him at that time. Yes. Continue. He asked me to talk about the other peers in my group. What do I think of them? Who, who comes from a good family. Do I know any thing about Sarah's family? Mm -hmm. Asking me to more or less be a spy. Yes. I feel flattered that he's paying attention to me. Mm -hmm.
Look into his eyes, the eyes of the window to the soul. Have you seen those eyes before? No. Mm -hmm. But they're piercing. Yes. Continue. And I feel he... He betrays me. I speak to him in confidence. And he tells my parents. And he tells that I've had impure thoughts over our other males. It's because I rebuffed him. Mm hmm Yes. Notice how this is making you feel now. Confused. Mm -hmm. So confused. Say that again. So confused. Yes. I thought we trusted each other. I thought he liked me and trusted me. Mm-hmm. And he betrayed me. Yes. And then shamed me publicly. Mm-hmm. Yes, continue. What happens next? He says he will put me in my place, and he did. Yes, continue. I'm now the village outcast. And I'm forced to work in his church. Yes. And I accept it as my penance. Mm -hmm. What happens next? He ends up moving away to another village for a promotion of his own church. Mm -hmm. I just stay at that same village. And look at your face. What does your face look like? It's scarred. Mm -hmm. From where he it seems to be a reed or Mm -hmm. Like a bull whip. Was that Mr. John's? Yes. Doing? Very good. So go to the moment of your death. What's happening? I'm in a bed in the village. I've got a cough. I have the fever. Yes trying to gain the strength to breathe in and it won't come in. The air won't come in. Yes. It's like walking through mud or glue and, mm -hmm. and it, it, it just becomes gradually darker. Yes. It goes gray to dark. And as it goes from gray to dark, what is the last thought that your brain thinks before you leave that body? My family. Mm-hmm. Yes, what do you think about your family? I thought f f f good things, fond, fondness. Mm -hmm. Were you separated from your family? Notice how old that body is when you die. 42. Mm-hmm. So I want you to talk to this body of this, this woman, the soul of this woman. What do you need to tell her? Oh, you shortchanged yourself with joy. You accepted so little from so many people. Mm -hmm. You gave and accepted so little on your own behalf. Mm -hmm. 
And I want you to notice these words that were given to you. You will bear this mark as a reminder not to sin. Notice how those words are now affecting this soul. I don't have to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. And I want you to go ahead and notice the energy of that scar, of that mark. What has happened to it? It's vanishing. Mm -hmm. It's healing. Yes. Yes. Vaporizing. Mm -hmm. Because that pastor gave you a gift, a gift which you accepted. And if you don't accept a gift, who does it belong to? Us. Mm -hmm. If you don't accept that gift, who does it belong to? Them. Very, very good. If so you're going to give back that gift, and you're going to talk to that pastor and tell him that you do not accept that gift, that scar, that reminder. Talk to him. Thank you, but no thank you. This does not belong to me. I choose not to accept. Mm -hmm. we just take that, all of that and just fling it out at him. And I want you to demand that he give you back the power that he took from you when he lied about you, that he shamed you in front of everybody. Tell him everything that you need to tell him. Listen, you may not speak ill of me again. You may not have any power over me. I demand the life you stole from me, mm -hmm. the joy in the future relationships that I did not get to have. I demand you give that back to me. Those are rightfully mine. Yes, give it to me now. Give it to me now. Take back all of that power. Take back all of that energy. He's shriveling up. Yes. You are nothing without that. Yes. And now can you forgive yourself for holding on to this for so long? For holding on to a shame that didn't belong to you? I can. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Release that. It doesn't belong to you any longer. And I want you to take that soul out of that lifetime now. Take her from that place in which she felt so much shame and I want you to take her into the light and breathe in that light and I want you to do now a scan of your body a scan of the face of the chest of the stomach tell me how that feels very good. So as we look back at all of these experiences that Wendy has gone through, she has been disassociating herself in many different ways. She has felt shame in this life for speaking her truth. What do you tell Wendy about all of these experiences that she's had? It's okay. It's okay. You are loved. Mm -hmm. You are good enough. And you're free. Mm -hmm. You are free from what other people think. Very good. And now that she is free from what other people think, I want you to look ahead into the future. 
Imagine you're standing in front of a mirror that tells your future. What do you see five years from now? Happiness and healthy mm -hmm. life with her children and grandchildren, and travel. Yes. And fun mm -hmm. and freedom. Very good. Step into that mirror now. And as you look out through the eyes of that reflection, you could fill in the space around you with all of the things that can make your life fulfilling, joyous, full of self-love and confidence, feeling that you are divinely guided every step of the way. And you could look around you and you could see those beings of light that surround you. Who are these beings that guide Wendy? The grandmothers mm -hmm. of indigenous, my indigenous grandmothers. Yes. What do they say to her? You are a good child. Mm -hmm. You are a loved child. Yeah, you hold the wisdom that you seek. Very good, very good. So as the grandmothers are there, I want you to look at those that also had addictions in her life. I want you to notice how all of that has been affecting Wendy's life. What do they need to heal so that all of the DNA moving forward in her life, in her children's lives, and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, what, what are they needing? What do they need to heal? To stop the secrets. Mm-hmm. Very good. Stop the shame. Very good. So I want you to find where all of those secrets have been hiding. Where have they hidden all of those secrets? Where do they put them in? Do they put them in a treasure chest? Do they put them, where do they hide the secrets? In the closet. In the closet, very good. So I want you to feel brave enough. And I want you to take with you the brightest of lights. And I want you to open that closet up. And shine a light on those secrets. They're not that bad. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. Talk to all of those pieces, those fractured pieces of those souls, of your ancestors, of your parents, talk to them. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. There's no shame in being addicted and alcoholic and sick. It is just a symptom. It is just a symptom. It is not who you are. It is not your identity. A small piece, a small piece. You use this as a coping skill because you had no others. It worked and then it didn't. There is no shame. Yes. Let it free, let it go. It's an easier way. And I want you to open your heart and just shine your heart into theirs. Let them feel that love. Let them feel that you will love them unconditionally. And notice what happens to all of them when you shine the light on them, when you shine your love. They shine too. Mm -hmm. And notice what happens to their souls as they begin to shine. They lift. Mm-hmm. They open. Yes. 
allow them to now release from the shame and send all of those pieces back to the light back to their soul to reunite see all the fractals going up yes yes send them with love don't leave anything in the closet and tell me what's there what's left shiny cedar closet with mm -hmm. nothing in it beautiful beautiful so how can Wendy use this now to help others in the same situation? Help them open their hearts. Mm -hmm. Let the shame be honest, open. Mm -hmm. Very good. To be free. Very good. So is there anything else that we need to work on today or do you feel that you're complete? We are complete. Five wide awake, completely alert, feeling wonderful all over. Welcome back. Just a few little tears. <laughs> a little bit. How was that? Oh, good. It didn't go where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> you know? Amazing, huh? Yeah. Holy cow. Where did you think it was going to go? I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know shame was so big of a piece. Big. big. Um, of everything. You know? Started very early. And abandonment, mm -hmm. like being left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, so, it's, so, it's really interesting how that life as this Puritan. I know. Went back to you when you were 16. Okay, not being able That's to... That's true. Mm-hmm. Right? Gosh. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you didn't connect those dots, but I the did same not. thing. It was the shame of impure thoughts. Which are really answer. technically, it's, it's anything thing. a 16-year-old feels like, oh, right. that guy's cute. But think about that. Yeah, the Same wow. exact situation. <sighs> wow. You weren't able to speak about it. Right? Wow. And then as the shame of not being able to do to to you know with your mother you couldn't even you didn't have a ground somebody actually hurt you which is the same thing as biting right. you so it's almost like you took on that shame of what happened with him and you're now man you manifested it like oh. i will hold on to this shame oh my god does that make sense All totally Totally. So, when did you want to share some of this? Absolutely, okay. especially if it might help somebody okay. else. Okay, terrific. Terrific. Okay, so we had quite an intense session, oh. did we not? It, it was <laughs> awesome. It was all over the place. It was yes. great. It was. I don't think I've cried that much in so long. Wow. But well, I feel so, really good. So, tell everybody where you're from. So, I am originally from Michigan, and now I live in Fort Collins, Colorado. Yes. It's up in northern Colorado, where I live with my family. Yes. And what do you do there? I... Um, I'm a drug and alcohol counselor, and I help people and families find treatment and do some personal work around addiction and mm -hmm. uncovering the hows and the whys yeah. and, and how to take the shame and guilt out of seeking help. And today we had a lot of shame uh, in this session. And tell everybody, I mean, when you first come out and came out of this, it was like, I, I didn't think it was I had no way. idea I had no idea that a I had that much shame yeah and you helped me put the two pieces together of my Puritan story yes and then um, my adolescent story of this yes. lifetime of both pivotal moments um, at that age bracket where shame was such a big piece and yes I had just no idea yeah. I had and that that's how that's what it's all about you know when we do a uh, a regression when we do one of these sessions we're 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 hitting a target and that target could be in this lifetime it could be in the womb starting from the womb um, through this life or it could go to a past life and in this one 
you know, we, we, we were basically targeting um, different things. Um, what was the first one that we were targeting? Um, yeah, the, the, the skin cancer on the yeah. face is one of the ones that we were targeting. Mm -hmm. And we were also targeting, um, you know, the alcohol, too. Right. So in one way or another. And do you feel that this has helped you figure oh, out where it all began? Absolutely, without a yes. without a doubt, um, and it's almost like how could this not have happened to me when now right. I know those past lives and yes. in what happened yes. in them. It's like, well, of course this happened now, <laughs> um, but now there's resolution, right? Yes. And I can look at it That's and it. take the shame out. Yeah. So when we do one of these past life regressions, when when I'm doing this, what we're looking for, we're targeting for the origin of where this all began, and it could be any time mm -hmm. and then we see how that manifests in this lifetime and once you are aware that this is what's happening when you're when you know oh that's what's causing it then it's like it doesn't need you don't need it anymore so yeah. it explains my disassociation through alcohol in this lifetime yes. you know even though it's been 25 years I can still yes. want to disassociate and now I can understand yeah. and say oh it's well it started when you were 13 mm -hmm. and that's with the shame and then um, throughout life there's been some shame some there incidences yeah. yes and then just recently uh, there's been some shame which we didn't show in this video because it has to do with family so we don't show that but again it triggered the shame so from, from and then opened up all those other lifetimes where shame was the core yes and underneath it all and always yeah. at that pivotal adolescent age yeah it's crazy it is no yeah it's something I could never do in a regular therapeutic session with just a therapist or something I, I could never access on my own <laughs> you so, know so we had talked about you possibly doing this yeah in the I'm definitely uh, you might see me at the training in Maryland in the spring oh, that'd be great. I, it looks exciting it's kind yeah. of calling to yeah. me and I think it would add a great depth to my current practice because um, most of us in long-term recovery are trying to figure out the why mm -hmm. how could we do this we're not having fun right. how, how did we get here Yes. And uh, I can see how this would be a great adjunct to answering directly how you got here. Exactly. You know, so exactly. I think it would be quite Now, exciting. had you been hypnotized before? Yes, with Antonio briefly, mm -hmm. and it was something completely different. That, that's you know, how it is. It was... Yeah, every time is a little bit different because you're targeting different things when you come to a session. So yeah. we were just talking about the hypnosis. If you're interested in uh, learning introspective hypnosis, I'm going to be uh, co-training with Antonio Sanjo. He he trains. He's a beautiful trainer. I mean, he, he just trains from the heart. Um, we're going to be doing a retreat in Marriott'sville, Maryland, starting Memorial Day 2023. It's a seven-day, six-night retreat, and Looks you're, beautiful. you're going to learn from from the from beginning to how to do a session. So, if you're interested in going, we have limited seats, but I'd love to see you there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, it had a lot of ins and outs, but that's how it is. In such a professional. Thank you very much. You don't even know you're being hypnotized. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yes. Thank you for watching. Bye. Much love to you. Bye-bye.